again and welcome to Four Play Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again, and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Each episode, we cover an aspect of sex that impacts your sex life and something that you can relate to. So if you find our discussions helpful, please give us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. We would love it if you would tell a friend about us. You can find us also on the web at foreplayrst.com. And if you have a comment or a topic that you'd like us to talk about, we'd love to hear from you. Please send them to us at info at foreplayrst.com. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. Hey, Lori. Hey. Welcome. Thank I'm you. Glad to be Thank here. Thank you. I heard um. that you had a awesome thing happen <laughs> recently. I did. That I you did. passed all of your exams Yay! for your doctoral program and yeah. class. The courses are over, right? The courses are totally over. Yes. I uh, know that feeling. That feeling is so wonderful. Not to ever be in school again. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I know, right? I know. You, yeah. can't, you can't do any more. Nope. No, no more is nope. left to be done. Nope. Well, I've got my research. Right. I've got my research to do, but that's actually exciting and fun. Right. And yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it, it was crazy. I was so anxious and so nervous. I had to take oral boards, oh, and man. so yeah, it was tough. We had to prepare a bunch of cases and just be able to go on the fly. They were going to just pick one, and I actually thought I was going to be given this one that was more difficult for me. Um, and then some people went, you know, ahead of me, and they called me and said, oh, you know, I had this case, that case, so you're probably going to get this case. So I doubled up again, last minute, cramming, walked in. They gave me an easy-peasy case. Like oh, For nice. me, it, it was something It's called vaginismus. You know, it's a painful sex condition where women's vaginas actually clench up and you know, I work with vaginismus. Yeah. I've seen hundreds of these cases. Well, so I knew everything, and they said I hit it out of the park. Well, good. Yeah. Well, of course you did. Oh, yeah. So that's, but I was so nervous, uh, and I was. I am just so grateful to be done. So. Well, congratulations on that. And Thank we you. are talking about the ultimate sex game today. <laughs> the ultimate sex game. <laughs> I think people are going to see that title and get <laughs> super excited. <laughs> <laughs> that we are going in a completely different direction than whatever yeah, we've Yeah, we're going to talk about game theory. <laughs> game, game theory. theory. So uh, it was funny. I had this conversation with my younger son, and, you know, he's struggling to sort out the whole man-woman thing. And uh, we have quite a few conversations. He's really in a different place than I am. And and we were talking about it the other night, and he's like, Mom, you know, do you know anything about game theory? Because, of course, he's a gamer and all that. And but he was applying it particularly to male-female relationships. And I said, yeah. you know, actually, as a matter of fact, <laughs> believe it or not, yeah. I know something about game theory. So I sent him my blog from Psychology Today on game theory. Can you summarize game theory for those that do not Yeah, so uh, game it? theory is basically we, we try to predict how people will react in different situations when there's when – there's, two ways to behave, either being cooperative with each other or non-cooperative. And Mm -hmm. sometimes uh, you might have heard of this as the prisoner's dilemma. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's another way that they use as an example. But Yeah. If you want a good movie that demonstrates game theory, um, War Games with Matthew Broderick. It's an old 80s movie. It is fantastic. War Games. Yeah. Ooh. And it illustrates it well. Well, my husband does this training. He does a Christian-based training, and it's called The Encounter Really, really cool if you are – it's very well, – I think it's pretty religious. But there are people out there who, who really get a ton out of this. And one of the games he plays in it is this thing called Red Black, and it's based on game theory. And it's the group of people who, you know, they, they kind of go through this training together. There's structured exercises. They uh, If you really want to know about it, you can email me, PM me or whatever privately, and I'll tell you about it. But And it's done in Nashville. They go through these exercises for four days and, you know, they come out of it and they have dealt with a lot of family of origin stuff, Mm -hmm. a lot of personal responsibility, ways that, you know, are they who they say they are and why not? And it's it's a really deep, neat thing that he he takes people through. Mm -hmm. But anyway, one of the games is called Red Black and it's based on game theory. And so he takes the group and, you know, they've all struggled together. And this is usually maybe a follow-up kind of game. They've all struggled together, so they're all really close and tight. And he gives them instructions. Okay, we're going to play a game. And the object of the game is to get the most points. Hmm. 
And this is how you to know, win. To win. Yeah. Right. To to win the game, you have to get the most points. And so basically, we're going to divide you into two groups. And if one of your groups votes red and the other votes black, then the group who votes red gets plus 15 points. And mm. the group that votes black gets zero. Mm. If both of you vote red, then you get zero points. Is both of you vote black, you get seven points each. Mm-hmm. And if both of you, yeah, so, okay, so then, then one group do, goes downstairs and one group stays upstairs. And, and everybody's like, okay, we got to win. We, you know, we really got to go yeah. all out. We got to win. And so what happens first is they both vote red, right? Because mm-hmm. that's the biggest opportunity, they think. If I vote red, I'm going to get plus 15 votes. That's going to get you the most points. That's going to yeah, get you the gonna, most points. That's going to get you to win. That's going to get you yeah. to win. And then at some point, you know, so they go like 16 rounds or something. It's a long game. It can be played. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we hours. Yeah. You know, because they have to they have to vote unanimously. Mm -hmm. And so at one point, one of the groups starts voting black. Mm -hmm. And the other group is like cheering. You can hear them upstairs. Yay! You know, they voted black. We voted (laughs) red. We got 15 points. This is awesome. You know, and then then they go back and the same group votes black and the other group says you know they're idiots Mm. they're voting black you know we're gonna vote we're gonna win we're gonna vote red and and then then the third round they're like why are they voting black Mm -hmm. they're you know they know they're gonna lose you know we're all in this for the win why are they voting black Mm -hmm. and then the fourth round they vote black and the other team votes red and eventually they're like wait 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 why is the other team voting black and what happens is the other team gets a hold of that the win is us. Mm. We are Both the teams. win. Both teams are yeah. really – to get the most points, it was never that you were against me. It was like we corporately have to get the most points. Mm. And the way we get the most points is we both have to vote blacks. So they send the upstairs group a message by voting black over and over and over, even in the face of – of their teammates who they love, who they're completely connected to at this point, you know, mm. they're voting red. They're voting against them. Wow. And I think this is what happens in marriage is oh, in marriage. Analogy, yeah. I know. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, we, we start out and there's these parts of us that are really frightened. Mm. You know, maybe we start out cooperatively. But then, you know, along the way, our partner votes red and it's like, oh, you know. And then our partner votes red again and that, that we just think, you know, I just married a selfish person. And we start voting red. Mm. And we start doing the things that work just for us. Yep. And then, you know, then we get locked into the power struggle and we're both voting red. Yeah, it you becomes know? a competition against each other right. rather and I, than for the women. I think yeah. like sexually, right, it's when one person says, you know, I, I could care less about sex. Mm. You know, and they see the look on their partner's face – and their partner who is sexually oriented, who's a sexual pursuer, who feels love as sex, you know, is just in despair. And mm. it's, I, I often see that partner and I think, how in the world – and this is usually somebody who proclaims that they love their partner. How mm. in the world can you love your partner, vote for yourself and say, you know, I, I just – I don't know. I just – I'm not – you know, I, I, don't, I don't really like sex that much. I don't yeah. care if I ever have sex. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's a vote for you. Yeah. But – but really, in marriage or in committed partnership, we have to vote for us. Yeah, I, I often think that, that that selfishness isn't always conscious, though. Oh no, I think no. I think they're they're. I I, I kind of conceptualize it sometimes as the the couple starts playing mental chess with each other. Right. Instead of working together to solve a problem, they're trying to make all of these moves. Uh, mm-hmm. They're voting red or they're voting black or they're trying to figure it out how to how to win, how to get what they need mm-hmm. um, without talking about it with their partner. And so what it's do all, we need? So what do we need? Right. Mm-hmm. And how do I get that? So, I mean, we had a, a listener write in recently and their question they're, they're They outlined their need for sex and how they weren't getting it. Right. And then yeah. they said, what I want you to talk about is how do I make my partner want more sex? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like that was their that's the way that they framed up the question. Uh-huh. I think that gets framed up in our heads a lot. How do we make these moves, right? Because this is the only way I know it. The game is just re- is just red. How do I win? How do I win? Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's and, what and we start. Yeah, to do. I mean, I think on the other side of it is I have people who say, you know, I have to have sex every day. I mean, I I need sex for anxiety reasons to calm down because I'm horny because whatever. 
uh, and I need it every day. And they look at their partner and mm-hmm. their partner feels completely overwhelmed by that. Yeah. You know, and and they're it's a it's a vote for themselves. It's a red vote. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think the issue is if we could get across is that the couple mindset is the black, black vote Mm -hmm. where we say, you know what, I'm going to vote for us above me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find a way. I mean, and I mean, the beautiful thing about it is when you vote black and you send your partner a message, this is the difficulty Mm -hmm. is I can't possibly give my partner sex, right? If I give them sex every day, like they say they want, they will they will drown me. Hmm. I'm like, try it. Try yeah. it for a week. Yeah. I always say that to people who, try who say, for a week. try it for a week. Yeah. You know, nobody who's ever taken me up on this has been able to talk their partner who wants sex every day to have sex seven days in a row. Nobody. Hmm. It Because it, they're ta- when a person says that, they're talking about a frantic inner need about supply. I need to know that the supply is there. Hmm. Once they know the supply is there, their demand goes down. Hmm. You know, and so when I sit when I challenge them, I'm like, "Okay, give them sex every day." I mean, they've never made a week, Adam. Yeah. You know, and I I know some listeners out there, "Oh, I'd make a week," you yeah. know. They yeah. think they would. They yeah. think they would, but really psychologically, it's about is my partner available to me? Does my partner care about me? And I mean, the issue is, is sometimes you got to vote black against mm-hmm. a red vote for a serious amount of time. I say mm-hmm. six months. Mm-hmm. I say that, you know, if your partner is shut down for whatever reason and you think they're selfish and you know the thing that you could do that would make them feel loved, mm-hmm. do it. Vote black. Vote black for six months. Yeah. Don't even look. Don't even listen to their vote. You know, it doesn't matter if, you know, occasionally they vote red and occasionally they vote black or if they vote red every single time. Send them a message. Say, I care more about us than I do about me. Let's come back and talk about that a little more after the break. One of the things that is interesting to me is that that move requires a lot of trust and it requires a lot of uh, not just care, but it requires it's it's again it's a vulnerable position. It's right? a vulnerable. I and I don't think it. Okay, we'll talk about it. Wanting sex again? How to rediscover desire and heal a sexless marriage by certified sex therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido, from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy, and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible hi i'm dr adam matthews and i want to welcome you to matthews counseling and matthews counseling we believe it is our job to come alongside you in whatever difficult challenges of life you are in and help you rediscover hope and to find the strength that you have to face those challenges. We believe in people, specifically that no two people are alike and therefore they need solutions that are unique to them. We strive to create a safe and comfortable place for you to explore who you want to be and identify the obstacles standing in your way. Oftentimes the first step toward finding help is the hardest, but it can also be the bravest. At MatthewsCounseling.net, we strive to help make the first step easy. There you will find our blog with some great resources from our therapist. You'll also find a link to our client portal where you can schedule directly with our therapist at your convenience. We offer free 30-minute consultations either in person or over the phone, so the first step is at no cost to you. Give us a call at 919-587-8018 or again, find us online at matthewscounseling.net. We look forward to working with you. Okay, I'm, I'm all about this, Adam. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think that voting black requires trust. I think people want to feel trust and want to believe that their partner will be reciprocal 
okay. if they vote black. I think it it demands maturity. It demands a commitment. Like I'm going to build between us something that is bigger than something that is in in us separately. I'm going to believe in synergy. I'm going to go for that. Mm-hmm. You know, I married you. You know, I chose you because I believed you were a good person. At some point, now I believe you're just a selfish person. But, but right now, I'm going to keep voting black. You know, I'm going to do the thing that works for us, and that way, I'm going to send you this yeah. message. I don't think it, it. You can't wait on your partner to send you a, a black message back. No, I don't think. I don't talk about waiting. I think it's it's trusting that they're eventually going to move. That that is that that is eventually going to do something because but, if they pe- don't. Then you're then what it's signaling is the end of the relationship. Yeah, but people in in a shut down relationship they don't have trust. I mean they uh, do, they have given up on trust. I, I yeah absolutely. But I think they they have to have something that they're going to that they are going to have some kind of trust in either the process or in the, the goodness of the other person mm-hmm. or that the other person is not an, uh, an evil villain that is out to get them. I, I just like, think, I think though, you, that that they think that. At that stage in the power struggle, they are looking at their partner honestly. You are an evil villain. You're out to take advantage of me. Right. But I think that if they take that position, though, that they're not going to execute the vote black strategy. They have to trust us. (laughs) (laughs) They they have to trust us because, you know, they've they've walked this path once, let's say. Well, let's maybe a couple times. Let me say it another way. I don't think they have to have 100 percent trust. Like they don't have to have they don't have to have as such a complete trust in in the other person. But if I don't have any kind of movement towards you, then where's the, then if I don't have any kind of um, belief in you as a person, mm-hmm. why would I move towards you? I, why I, would I keep voting black? I, I think it's it's in, based in principle. It, it has to be based in principle. Like they have to get it. Mm. They have to get it somewhere deep inside that says. You know, right now I'm married to a selfish person. I'm married to someone who wants it all their own way, you know, who isn't sexual or who's hypersexual or whatever the judgment is. Yeah, Lori, that's such a risk. It that's is such a, a risk. I it mean, is that's, a freaking I mean. risk. That's what I mean. Like it's, it, it is a huge risk. And so you, there has to be something that I base that's that on. That's in it, on. them. That I base that I base that well, on this besides is, just a just a this um, is game theory. I know this is game theory that says it's better to be cooperative than it is to be non cooperative. It's better. Yes. It's I mean, it's an ideal, right? I mean, we marry based on the idea that right. two are better than one. That it's right. better to go through life partnered than it is to go through alone. But it's much better to go through life partnered with somebody who's sharing the yoke with you, right? Who's shoulder to shoulder with you, who's saying, we're going to make it together. But every coupleship has to go through the power struggle. Uh, Nobody escapes that. Yes, except the power struggle is the game. Like that's that's the game. And so like being able to get out of that. And this is and you mentioned that, you know, when you try giving couples the the week assignment, do it, every, you know, yeah, every, you know day try it every day for try a week it. that you haven't had anybody do that. I also haven't had anybody that when I ask them, you know, look at your partner. Right. And see I, what I say is I want you to look at the top of their head and see if you see any horns growing out of their head. Right? <laughs> and then look at look at their butt and see if you if they've got a tail. Have you noticed that that they're pl- they've been playing at you know more with a pitchfork lately than, right. than is typical than usual. than usual? Right. Basically saying is your partner really the devil? If your partner is really the devil, like if they are really out to get you, then you mm-hmm. need to get out of that relationship. Right. If they are at their heart of hearts, if they are, if they are, if they, if that is who they are. And, but I have not had anybody that has, that has come back and said, yes, they are, you know? And so I think like being able to take that position then gives them the motivation to do what you're saying and to vote black over and over and over again until their partner. I think that, you know, some people come from more functional places, so they have more hope innately, but other people don't. And so they, they really see their partner as the devil. Um, and and let me say something to the sexual pursuers because they're gonna write me uh, <laughs> or write us. You know, it's like, am, are you saying, Lori, that I should just not have sex then? Because my partner will not have sex mm-hmm. for more than one week, more than one month, probably more than one year. No, I am not saying that. Mm-hmm. I I think it's a little different when you're the sexual pursuer in terms of how you approach this. One, what I'm saying, go without complaint. Initiate. Say, you know, I'd love to make love to you tonight. Uh, and if you get turned down, don't pout. Stop pouting. Mm-hmm. That's a vo- that's a black vote. Sure. 
But you do have to initiate if you're the sexual pursuer. But you have to stop pouting and you have to stop over initiating. Hmm. Like, like try to find in your heart, you know, when you really feel desire, initiate then. Say it in a sexy way. Say it in a way that says, I want you, not, you know, can we have it sex yet? Can we ever have sex again? You know, none of that kind of junk. Yeah. You know, just initiate in a beautiful way for six months. And if they turn you down for six months, okay, then write me. But but in the other ways that they need to be loved, you know, whether it's emotional closeness, talking, whatever their love language is, give that. Give it in a spirit of grace mm-hmm. and and then see what happens. I'm not saying don't initiate. That's crazy because yeah. that is crazy talk because I agree sexual distancers will not spontaneously come forward. Yeah, I like I like that idea of you have to stop being disappointed by the no. Yeah. And like you can't be you there, can't be you didn't so strike it. it can't be so heavy, right, that every that your nonverbals, your um your actions toward them change. Like you can't just roll over on the other side of the bed as soon as you get a no vote, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you have to still do the things you still have to move toward toward them in that. Yeah, that seems to be exactly. Like the, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. What about the lower desire spouse? How do they vote no? So, I mean, they no, they how they vote black. How they vote black, I mean. Yeah. They vote black um, by giving sex, by initiating sex, you know, mm-hmm. and affection. I mean, sometimes avoidant people, people who are anxiously, are avoidantly attached distancers, mm-hmm. Um, Because they were so deprived of touch when they were infants and children, they also don't have a part of them that's very affectionate either. Mm -hmm. So it has to be both a sexual vote and a vote of touching. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, many people I see, they're able to touch their children, so they're breaking the generational problem Mm -hmm. with their kids. You know, they, they stroke their kids, they touch their kids, they hug their kids and kiss them and all that stuff, but they're not as able to do that with their partner. So I think the black vote is definitely vote, you know, with touch, yeah. with sexual initiation, you know, or by sexual reception, you know, but be you're, open. You're doing this out of care for your partner, right? This is I mean, out of has, love. It has to be out this of care. This is out of love. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't have to come out of desire because a lot of, you know, women, you know, with their low testosterone don't feel desire in the beginning. They do mm-hmm. feel it after they get going, mm-hmm. you know, so, so it's okay to say, yes, you know, I will make love with you. You know, if your partner says, do you want to have sex? Don't say uh, want and mm, no, want, no. Just say, yes, I, I will. I would love to make love with you. Mm. Yeah. And then you have to somewhat be into it, though, right? I yeah. Mean, I mean, be... arms around, legs around, you yeah. know, warmth. Yeah. You know, just, I mean, holding and care and um, a good spirit about it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's nothing more soulless, right, than somebody who just lays there. That That's just the epitome right. of... And nobody, no. wants, nobody wants that's that. That's a red no, vote. No pursuer wants that. That's right? a red vote. Yeah. yeah. Starfish Absolutely. sex is a red vote. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Starfish sex. Yeah, I like that. Just laying there. <laughs> Ugh. But I think you, one of the things that you, is that you're making the decision right for the couple, not mm-hmm. just for yourself, right? And I, 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 I think that this is so counter to every – other way that our culture and society talks about relationships. Mm-hmm. Like I, I feel like this is really different because most of the time we are out for ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that is what the the dating apps are all about, right? It is about us. It is not about the other person. Um, right. The way that we pursue partners right now is not about the other person. And the way that we think and talk about marriage, right, it is it is all defensive. It is all for mm-hmm. Um, for me, so beginning to think differently about this, to not play the game that everybody else is that everybody else is playing is is really different, and I think it's really, I th- honestly think it's a really radical idea for most people that yeah. they have not thought about. I guess that's why I'm adamant about they don't need to have trust because so many good marriages end up in the tanker, you know, because they haven't played this game. They haven't developed a couple mindset. Mm -hmm. Like when I care more about you than I do about me, I'm going to live life differently. You know, I heard this story actually. It was on a YouTube thing about a marriage counselor, and she was saying that her husband had a blocked heart artery. Mm -hmm. And she told him, you know, okay, we need to stay home for the next, you know, several months so that you can recover. And he's like, you don't get it. The reason I live is to go do the work that we do as a couple to help other couples. Hmm. And 
That's that's without doing that, my heart will stop. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, I realized that I had to love the man, the man who who was around the heart, not just care about his health. I I you know, I was loving a man who had a heart. And I had to let go of my anxiety in order to do that. And, it, and basically what she was saying is I had to care more about who he was, what he felt. That was a black vote mm-hmm. versus what she wanted, which was I can't lose you. I mean, it sounds like all the same, but it's not. It's like mm-hmm. honoring our partner's wishes and separateness and independence is a black vote. Mm-hmm. They're differences. Yeah. We'll, we'll agree to disagree a little bit because I think it still means that she's still – trusting that eventually he will vote he will get the message and eventually yeah and i mean this black. couple very functional and and right. i i think they're you know how do we figure out if if our partner is worth it i mean i think there are certain behaviors that are unchangeable in marriage right that yeah. are very toxic yeah, that see you're actually yeah. agreeing with me that's actually I that, do. that's what i mean I, I mean i think that you have to see them as as worthy of the effort to vote black for, mm-hmm. s- for six months, mm-hmm. right? You have to see them as having a core goodness that is worth putting the energy into it right. to be able to, to do that, right? And, and accept the difference between their character and their behavior, mm-hmm. right? They may not be mm-hmm. behaving in a way that you want, but their mm-hmm. character is still something that's worthy of, of making that vote, of yeah. doing it, of, of changing how the game that you're, that you're playing. Right, right. Okay, okay. I guess I can agree to that. <laughs> it's just that I, you know, see so many people who give up and say, you know, they're a good father, they're a good provider, or they, you know, a good worker, mm-hmm. but they just don't love me. You know, they're totally all about them. Or, you know, she's she's fantastic, she's beautiful, she's attractive, mm-hmm. you know, but she's never going to give me sexually what I need. Yeah. I agree that there's that with what you're saying about it being a mature place as well. Like it is a maturity to say I'm still going to do this even though I don't see a way I don't necessarily see a way forward. Yes. Right. Yes. I don't I don't know how this is possibly this is possibly going to change. Right. But I I think it's worth it and I'm you know that's going to do it. That's mature. Okay, well that's game theory. You're listening to Four Play Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson and couples therapist Dr. Adam Matthews. Uh, pretty soon to be Dr. Lori Watson. Yay. Yay. Okay. Thanks. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. 